What's up guys, this episode we're diving into another Vue.js episode and this time we're going to be talking about how to mount Vue components from inside your Rails application. This is going to be really interesting because it's something I learned from the Laravel community on how you can actually have Vue as a wrapper around your entire application's template and then you can automatically mount those components from inside your Rails views. And this is really interesting and it makes it even easier to pass in data into your Vue components. So we're going to be exploring this and it's going to be a pretty awesome improvement over stuff we've done previously. So let's dive in. First off, I'm just going to go set up Webpacker again. Uh, we're going to run what Rails Webpacker install and then right after this we're going to run Rails Webpacker install view and that will go ahead and install everything for us. Then we're going to set up our layout. So we're going to go modify our layout so we have a wrapper around all of our content and that content is going to be where um, view gets mounted to. So view is going to be kind of this wrapper around all of our content. So let's run Rails Webpacker install view. That's going to get us set up with everything that we need and while that is running, let's go ahead and make some adjustments to our Rails app. So I'm going to go to our head tag and what we're going to do is just grab this JavaScript include tag and we're going to change it to JavaScript pack tag to load our webpacker pack then we can go into app javascript and go into our packs now hello view is where it has some examples for this and we're going to grab um, this example down here at the bottom that uses view turbo links and we're going to pull that into our application js file so we're going to actually set that up in here instead um, this has your traditional Turbolinks load, create a view app, um, and you have to mention the components here, and that's going to be what it renders and all of that stuff. One of the dependencies that we have is the view Turbolinks package, so we're going to run yarn add view Turbolinks, and we can run form and start afterwards to get our Rails application loaded. Now, one of the things that I want to point out here is that the way that this works is that we have to create an element with an ID of hello, and then we have our component replace that element on the page. This is fine, but we can actually make some really interesting adjustments to this by mounting it to, say, some sort of a uh, single tag on the page. So if we did like a data behavior equals view here, we could go to our layout for application ERB and then we could put this and wrap our content of our page with that. So we could say data behavior equals view here. That would mount our view application to this wrapper. So this will make the view application mount across all of our views like index, show, uh, new, and edit. And those will be all wrapped in the view application. So that means that anytime we type our components in here like app, we can then actually register those inside of view and have them automatically mounted on the appropriate tag. So if we have view component, uh, we want the app tag to render the app component. We can get rid of the data and components down here and this is going to make it so that these automatically are rendered whenever you come across them. So you can put these inside your layout, you can put them inside your uh, views and it will automatically mount the view components to them which is really cool. So if we go back to our browser, uh, we can load this up and you'll see a hello view is rendered there automatically and that is really awesome. That means that we can go and paste this in a bunch of times, refresh our page and it's going to show up every single time. One of the biggest benefits though is that we previously had to do like a div with data, say message equals, and we would put in some sort of object like errors.full messages to JSON. And that would be something that we would have to manually parse out, pass it in as the data um, into our view application that we would mount here manually. That stuff I've talked about in previous episodes and it works and it's uh, fine, but we can actually improve that if we do this inside of an application tag that's wrapping all of our content. So what we could do instead is we could actually have colon message equals and we could have our object full messages or we could do just like a string to JSON in here. And the magic of this is actually going to be that the colon part 
and the prop name is going to be automatically parsed as JSON and then available in the props inside of that component. So here we can go into app, and we can get rid of this data function and we can say props message and that's going to give us access to this message that we could then display. So if we refresh our page, we get hello. We can go change this to testing and refresh our page and we're gonna get testing. So that's really cool. So the really nice part about this is it saves us from having to do the setup and mounting and we don't have to pull the data attributes off of there and then JSON parse them and then pass them into the view instance um, as data. We can have that automatically handled for us by just the normal way that Vue.js works. So that is really cool and saves us a lot of time and code from our client side. Another cool thing is that if you wanted to do something like one up to 10, each do I, you can actually have Rails render a bunch of these components and then like have dyna dynamic content for each one. So if you wanted to have components for some item on your index page, you could loop through all of your items in Rails just like you normally would, and then each item could then be rendered out using view components uh, like so. So you could have this where it displays one through 10 um, because we're using a Rails loop to create 10 of those items of the app component tag on the page with the necessary JSON in it. So it's really neat and a great way to integrate Rails and Vue.js in together. Now another feature that I wanna point out here is that we can actually do a special thing called inline template here where our app is going to be ignoring the template inside of our view single file component. And this is really interesting because that allows us a lot more freedom to do things the way that we might want. So we might want to say, well, in this case, we want our message to be in an H1 for this version of it. And so we'll have our message up here, message equals say, <coughs> um, Go Rails really big, we'll make it a JSON object and pass that in. And then we can refresh the page and we're gonna see Go Rails in really big font because it's an H1 tag. Um, and this is overriding the single file components template as well. So if you wanted to, you can actually have Rails code inside of your app templates or your view component templates um, and so you could have your image tags in here that would be harder to pass over into Vue.js. You could actually use them inside of here if you wanted. You could use form for if you wanted as well or form with. You can do any of that type of thing because you are inside of a Rails view. And that's really interesting and something that you might want to do or might take advantage of in certain situations. For the most part, I would just render all of these as single file templates and keep that template along with the code to process it and the styles in single file components. But there are opportunities where using an inline template can come in handy. And so I wanted to point that out and talk about that because that is something you could consider doing in your application. Now before we go, I just wanted to point out how clean this ends up being compared to the old style of doing things that I was previously showing in episodes. Now this old style is basically the same thing. We would still register our components, but we were doing them inside of our view instance. And then we were specifying a template and saying, whenever you find this element of ID of hello, then we're gonna go mount and replace that element with our new template here, which was just rendered out this app component. And this works fine, but um, we can actually simplify that a lot by number one, having that element always on every page. So it wraps all of our content, which means that we can use view there if we want, but we don't have to use any view components. And so this ends up being, uh, we don't have to check every page anymore. That is handy. And the JSON parsing that we would have previously had to do to load say the message would have had to come inside of this if statement. We need to make sure the element exists. Then we need to check its data sets and grab the message here. And then we would have had to pass that in to like the data object, something like this, where we would specify the message is the message. 
and that is fine but it was kind of messy to set up and we can simplify a lot of that stuff into just a really really short view um, method here where we set up view and then rails uh, templates can determine what needs to go where on which page so this allows you to get rid of kind of all this complexity in your JavaScript and then your views in your Rails app can go and determine which view components should be rendered in with which data. So it's kind of interesting, a different approach that you might want to take using Vue.js in there. It makes for a light coupling between the two, um, but it allows them to talk to each other really, really easily and can save you a lot of trouble as you go and add more interactive stuff into your app. In effect, you're almost building out your view components, sort of like you would with Stimulus, where you can just drop them in wherever you might need to into your application. And that, I think, is pretty awesome and saves a lot of trouble. I've been using this in, um, in Hatchbox as I've been building it, and so I wanted to talk to you guys about this. Um, because I first learned about this in Laravel um, where they're doing that around their applications and I thought that was pretty cool. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want to see more Vue.js stuff, let me know in the comments below and I will talk to you guys in the next episode. Peace.